Hello, my name is Joe Sass. Hi, I'm Phil Stevenson. Um, today, I'd like to talk about some of the contents on an Opus report. There is something called WGS84, there's something called ITRF, and there's something called NAD83, and the NAD83 on this report has NAD83 Cores 96 Epoch 2002. Phil, I think this is a topic that, that, that a lot of people don't understand, and I would just like to simplify it a bit and ask you a few questions about this. Do you mind? Sounds good to me. It's a very confusing issue. Okay, so let's start out with WGS84. What is WGS84? WGS84 is an ellipsoid and a datum that's used by the Department of Defense of the United States. It's strictly a DOD system. So uh, I heard you, uh, Most I, I hope the audience caught this, not only is WGS-84 an ellipsoid, but it's a datum. Yes, and, and, and when, we call it, when we refer to it as a datum, we have to understand that it has, um, it has iterations in the same way that NAD-83 has iterations. There are various versions of WGS-84. So let's segue over to this comment I made on this data sheet. It says NAD-83 Cores 96 Epoch 2002. Walk me yes. through that. Well, so how, first off, how does NAD-83, do, do I need all of those parameters to relate NAD-83 to WGS-84? Well, there's, see, there's a, critical, there's a critical part of this that you just left out because we really don't have an, a good way to relate WGS-84 to anything, mostly because the De Department of Defense does not share that. Ah. So, what, how can we relate it? We can we can relate it to the civilian version of WGS-84. What we know is that there, there are very close approximation between the current version of WGS-84 and the current version of ITRF-00. So, is, let me stop you. ITRF-00 ITRF, yes. whatever iteration it is, it's zero, 00 right now we're talking about, that's civilian. Yes, that and is the WGS civilian WGS-84 is military. You got it. Okay, the the WGS-84 right. is strictly a military system. The ITRF, the ITRF, whether it's zero, 00 or whatever, is sort of the civilian version of WGS-84. Now, now, wait a minute. Does this report anywhere on it say WGS-84? No. The oh, Opus report actually... Uh, you know, it's, it's a kind of an assumption that you're going to see WGS-84 in a government report. You would, you would think that, but because the, the DOD does not share their data, there's nobody that knows a precise position relative to WGS-84. Nobody outside the DOD. Okay, so I guess the real question then is, how does ITRF relate to NAD83? Okay. Is that the question? Yes. Now, okay. now we have something that we can relate to. Because the National Geodetic Survey computes two different positions for the primary control in the United States. Okay. And uh, we can talk about how NARCAN does the same thing in Canada. But uh, uh, basically, we have the Opus Report or in most data sheets from the National Geodetic Survey, give us both the ITRF-00 position for a CORS and the NAD-83 CORS-96. And in, on the Opus report that you have, it's NAD-83 CORS-96 EPIC-2002. That tells us that it is a particular datum, NAD-83. It is a particular adjustment, CORS-96, and that the last adjustment of that particular station was 2002. Now, does that mean that on January 1st, 2002, this value matched the ITRF 2002.0 value? No, it's, it, it matched. That was the NAD83 position computed by the National Geodetic uh -huh. Survey. Okay. It's very important to understand that NAD83 is different from the ITRF because it is, it is set, uh, NAD-83 is set relative to a survey monument at Father's Point. And as you pointed out this morning, that's located in Canada. In Canada. Isn't that something our yeah. U.S.-based control is based uh, on a control point up in Canada? Yes, but the important issue is that this was a, an agreement between Canada and the United States. Mm -hmm. So that the, two, the mapping systems used by the two governments would agree. And they agree rather solidly. That's interesting. Yes. So, um, 
So we so once we have the NAD eighty three coordinates for a point, now we have something that we can use for the, our mapping work, and that's 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 the important relationship. As we you know people talk about WGS eighty four and ITRF and NAD eighty three without a full comprehension that there are differences between each and that the difference, particularly between ITRF-00 and NAD-83 in, in the neighborhood where I live is about four and a half feet horizontal. Yes, about the same where I live. Okay. Yes. So, um, as a technical support uh, guru, you use another word, I'll use guru with this one, <laughs> um, is there anything else you'd like to tell our audience about these relationships between WGS-84 ITRF and NAD83. Well, I think the most important thing to remember is that there's a variety of control out there. And as we make GPS measurements between the control points, we may not always find exact agreement between them, partly because of when were the coordinates determined. And we're going to let's take a step back in time, Joe, if we've got just a minute. All the way back to NAD27. And people still today talk to me about surveying relative to NAD 27. What I point out to them is that we're learning more and more about the size and shape of planet Earth all the time. In 1927, there was no space travel. There were no electronic computers. There were no electronic measuring devices. So think about the changes that take place today that are quite small by comparison with the changes that take place between 1927 and well, today. Well, I mean, we've talked about this before. It seems like the best method for dealing with NAD27 is to localize. Use Just your treat, local it, treat it as local control yes. and localize your current GPS measurements to those ground-based control. Yes. And, and I like your expression, the proof is in the dirt. Yes. As a surveyor, if you want to match control, the proof is out there in the dirt. Go measure the control. <laughs> Thank you very much, Phil. I appreciate your input. Have a good day. Thanks.